and Wonderful Monsters, my first feature. So I had made some short films. I'd done a TV series, a couple of episodes of The Bill, um, and a single drama for the BBC called Loved Up, which was kind of my step up, really, into longer form stuff that got a bit of recognition. And that's, that was what really was the calling card that enabled me to get the gig. I met Uberto at a film festival. I think I was going around with Loved Up um, and he was going around with Palookaville. And that's the great thing about festivals. You know, you kind of meet other filmmakers and he said, I loved your film, I've got this script. I said, well, I loved your film. And he said, don't panic, but it's about male strippers. But it's much better than it sounds. And I'll send it to you. When I, it, was with, it was sort of stuck at Film 4, as far as I knew at the time. There was just a few weeks waiting and it arrived. And, I remember getting up very early in the morning and reading it and just loving it, you know. And, uh, but not like I had a lot of reference of like other films people had sent me. <laughs> it was like one of the first times anyone had sent me a feature film script. So I was already, you know, keen. But I just loved it and just recognised so much in it that I thought I just felt totally in tune with, you know, what it was trying to say. There had been this TV film, like an ITV single drama, which I was sent as well, which did sort of went the other way, really, and fell into a lot of the pitfalls of kind of willy, too many willy jokes and sort of double entendre. And my whole thing was to just try and play it, get the laughs right, but try and play it as a story, as a drama, you know, and not really force the gags at all, just let that come out of the situations. And the scripts already was on that way, but it had stuff in it where you kind of thought, it had that doll cue scene, you kind of think, well, that, you know, I put a massive tick by it when I read it, but you kind of think, will that ever quite come off? But the actors kind of just embodied it so much that it, it works. It evolved a bit, you know, there was another financer came in, we did a whole set of notes with them, it got a little bit more... It sort of got more Hollywoody, really, in one draft. Um, like the big, bigger ending, all that kind of stuff. And I tried to cut a few sort of willy sausage jokes and stuff like that, um, but most of them got through in the end. Yeah, I think it was, uh, it was in a really, in a great state. And I just identify with it. I've been to college up north, I've been to college, I remember a Londoner, but I've been to college in Leeds. My graduation film from Leeds Film School was this thing about Sheffield steelworks closing down and it all just kind of went pop, you know. And that kind of, mas that whole study of masculinity is something I'm really interested in. Oh, it had to be done in Sheffield, right down to the smaller roles, the extras, the spirit of the place and just all the backgrounds. You know, it's a hilly, it's a great city. The hills are fantastic. You know, we put as much, I was trying to get them on the hills as much as possible so you get that sort of backdrop of the city. Um, it's a really cinematic place and it's just got, you know, like all the extras were from local clubs and stuff. So the spirit of the city is really in it. The one thing we struggled with a bit was actually the film is sort of set earlier than we were doing it. You know, I hadn't, even for the time since I'd left Leeds at college and come to London, I was going back saying, oh, you, know, you drive over this flyover and it's just like decimated steelworks, it's amazing. And then like Meadow Hall's now there. It was like, oh, it really, we just framed it out a lot of that. And it's kind of set in a Sheffield a few years earlier than we were really, you know, when the steelworks had just had the plug pulled and when there were lots of disused, we had trouble finding disused steelworks to shoot in. We had to go way out of Sheffield because a lot of that had been knock down and kind of turn into hypermarkets and stuff. The songs came easier than the score, really. Um, the songs I always thought should be kind of from the heyday, the guy sort of heyday in a way, in the heyday of the steelworks, the you know, 70s really, and like that. And it all adds to the kind of disco dancing element of what they're doing, you know, and the sort of frivolity of 70s dance music, really. That was sort of easy, and that was a lot of that was decided in, in pre-production. We had to sort of nail all those songs. The score came later, and uh, I mean, Anne Dudley, just the way that her score shapes the emotion of the thing and tie, sort of ties it all together is amazing, you know. And Uberto has a lot to do with that. He's married to, was married to Rachel Portman. He's like really, you know, he was really helpful in the edit about how to use the score to, you know, hold the whole thing together.
Well, I think the trick of the script in many ways is that time bo comedy time bomb of like ticking clock, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, just holding off, you know, you want to hold a comic premise, as little, squeak it as long as you possibly can. And that's what it did so well. I remember Roberto, an early meeting, sort of going, maybe they should, maybe they never strip. And then he had, an, he had an idea once where you just see some guy outside the working men's club listening to it and you hear a cheer. And I was like, we've got to see him strip. But that's his, that was part of the influence on the script and it wasn't all about that, it was just about the build-up, you know. But the ending, I thought it was going to, this is good, could be amazing, you know. But we had so, we wanted like three days to shoot it. We did it in a day. And I think I wanted like six cameras. I think we got three cameras or two, I can't remember, three cameras, I think. And, you know, the actors had to go over and over again doing it. But never taking their, I mean, I just said to them, you can, you're going to have to go naked, but what, all the cameras will be behind you. And just gonna have to actually go the whole way once. But to get the coverage, we just all we do is we just shot it from different angles and went nearer and nearer to the point of exposure, which really worked for the crowd because they were like getting more. You know, it's weird the ending because it's two and a half minutes or something, and yet you kind of feel like it's much longer and a bigger event. If you actually paid your ten quid and it was like, all right, I've got two minutes of stripping, but somehow it just feels bigger. And it's partly I think the day was really big building up to this one moment where finally it was like, what are we going to... And we went really close a few times, it was like, it's not right, cut! You know, and then eventually, bosh. It was written, the first time I read it, it was a full frontal naked star jump. I remember those words very well. And I remember quite a few actors sort of in casting going... And I, I sort of, I remember that I was thinking, well, maybe it could be that the lighting is, they're really backlit so you don't quite see it. Or like people's hands, I was thinking maybe if it, people's hands go up and they just fortuitously block the bits, you know, the bits. Um, but that would be quite hard to actually realise. And then it just struck me, I think, on a recce at the, in the club, you know, like just do it from behind. Bums, it's like bums are funny, balls are yucky. And a little, that flare of light between Tom Wilkinson's butt cheeks is just like the cinema god shining down. Well, I'd never made a film, so I didn't know. A bit of me sort of thought, oh, yes, what happens when you make a film? It's great, you know, because I'd never done it before. So, I mean, making it, shooting it, I was just wanting to make, get through the days, you know. It was a first-time director. We were behind by about a week after four days. And it was just getting, making the schedule, managing all these different characters, and just each day at a time. You never thought, I just thought, I hope we get, I get to the end of the schedule and, you know, survive it. It was only in the edit that you started to, people, it was when people outside the in immediate circle start really responding to it, that you can't, when like the editing assistants are like telling you they're crying, syncing up rushes, and, and then the sound people start looking at it and they're like raving about it, and you start to sort of think, there's something going on here. I mean, I suppose the first moment, I, when we did, you know, you're assembling scenes as you go, first time we put like six, seven scenes together, I was like, well, that's really good, you know, that is really good. <laughs> And you kind of think maybe, and then people start watching it. But it's only pub, you know, I did an early screening for like mates, and they all seemed to love it. Better, it's like they were all drunk. They were all drunk, and uh, but the festivals when it popped, you know, it was only Sundance when it popped, and then you're like, bloody hell, you know, people just love it. Yeah, definitely. You know, not necessarily a positive one. I think a lot of things got green lit that shouldn't have. <laughs> Because it was like, I probably made a couple of them. But it's like sort of Phil Monty effect was kind of, wow. You know, if you just give it, the sleeper hit almost became people looking for it, which is a kind of contradiction. It's like you don't, you have to make it because you want to make it and it just feels right to make it. And then things cross over and it's accidental almost. But as soon as you're sort of, oh, this could be, as soon as someone's going, this is going to be a sleeper hit, there's no longer a sleeper hit because it's not sleeping in the first place. Everyone's trying to big it up from the beginning. So... It was great though, it boosted confidence, you know, it boosted the profile, a lot of the actors went on to, you know, have big careers and so you can't knock it but I think it was too much confidence a bit after it in some ways. In that kind of high concept comedies, you know, with a bit of grit in them, became a bit ten a penny for a while.